today we have another Manic Karokan game to go through, which I played online this morning, and I'll be taking you through it. This game is absolutely wild, like, I'm pretty sure in the game review there were like 8 misses from each player, 10 mistakes for each player, 10 inaccuracies for each player. It was ridiculous, so there's going to be mistakes everywhere, especially later on in the game when it gets to low time, but... It's very entertaining. So, like I said, Karu Khan, C6. My opponent plays this D3 line, which I don't understand. It's called the Briar variation. I do see it quite often. And I get a lot... The, the idea, the main idea, I believe, is to go Knight to F3 and exchange the Queens like this and claim that you've got an advantage in the endgame. Um, but my opponent plays a knight d2 instead. So I just take it. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to play e5 just to take the center because white's allowed me to take the center. But I take. He takes back with the knight, which I was surprised by. And I go knight f6 because I would like to exchange the knights like this. Open my bishop up and castle. This is very reminiscent of a Tartakawa Karakan which goes like this, no, not d3, like this, and then you take, and then you go here, and then you take, take. So you get the exact same position, except the pawn is on d4 rather than d3. My opponent instead doesn't take, and he plays bishop g5. So I took the knight, he took back with the pawn obviously, and I play queen a5 check. And I thought this was a nice move, because I attack the bishop, and I attack the king, right? This means that my opponent either has to play queen d2 to guard the bishop, or bring the bishop back to d2. And if my opponent plays queen d2, I'm going to trade queens. We play bishop d2, and I go queen e5, and I think, ah, okay, I'm attacking e4 and b2. And he can't defend both. So he decides to defend e4, and I take on b2. Taking on b2 can often be very risky in openings like the Sicilian. It's often, you know, like a poisoned pawn variation of various openings. But I was confident I could hold this because my b7 pawn is nicely protected if the rook comes to the file. And in my head, I figured that all I need to do is get the bishop out, get the knight out, and castle. Things don't go quite so smoothly. So after e6, which the computer hates for some reason, here I should have brought the queen back to um, f6, but I was worried about it getting attacked by the bishop on either g5 or c3. Not c3 immediately, but in the future. So I bring it to a3. I don't really want to take this a2 pawn here, because I felt like it opened up too many lines, um, and I thought my queen would get too stuck. Because the queen doesn't really have an easy way out. Like, these bishops are cutting off these squares, and the rook's cutting off this entire file. These squares are also taken up. So I thought my queen had no real way out, and if I ever tried to come to a free to get out from this diagonal, oh my god, to get out from this diagonal, then... So imagine he castles, queen here. Not right now, because my bishop's here, but there's a potential of like the bishop coming to b4 at some point. Anyway, I play queen a3, opponent castles. I play bishop e7, because I'm trying to castle. My opponent goes e5. This confused me, but I think the point was that my queen can no longer retreat to d6. I think that's why he played it and to open up his light squared bishop onto this diagonal. So I play knight d7. I didn't want to castle here because I thought that there was a Greek gift sacrifice. Um, and may maybe you don't play, wow, rook b3 first. And then, no? What's the idea? Bishop b4? Ah, bishop b4 and then winning this bishop. 
Okay. Well. That's kind of crazy. But okay, e even though there wasn't a Greek gift, um it was still right not to castle and knight d7 is better. So I played the right move for the wrong reasons essentially. My opponent goes rook b3 and I go queen a4 which is apparently bad. Apparently I should take this pawn. The engine just says don't be afraid and take the pawn. Uh, that's that's difficult to do. Like this is a tough position to try and play. I'm up two pawns but my queen is stranded. I felt like keeping the a-file closed was better for me. So I go to a4 and my idea is that I want to swing the queen to the g4 square to help out of the king's side defense because I know an attack is coming. Rook b1 is played, which confused me, but I play queen g4, rook e1, and knight c5, attacking the bishop. And I thought I was good here, um, and I am, unless my opponent finds rook to b4, attacking my queen, because the bishop's control of b4 has been cut off by the knight. But my opponent doesn't see this, which means that queen g4 is now a good move. And then I castle. Rook b4 is now played, and I drop back to g6. Bishop e3 attacks my knight, and here I was kind of confused. I didn't really understand why he would attack my knight. So I just played b6 to shore the defense of my knight up. But then, bishop d3, and my queen's hanging. And here I was really worried, because if I move my queen, rook h4, and I'm losing the h-pawn, I don't really know where else I can put my queen, because these we we already discussed what happens if queen here, and if queen here the exact same thing. I can't go to f6. If I go any if I if if I go to um I can't go to f5 because the bishop controls it, and there's there's nowhere else for my queen to go. All the other squares are taken up. Computer wants f5 here which it makes sense. Uh, honestly, I didn't really consider it. I thought the best thing for me was to take on b4 and give my queen up. And the computer thinks this is equal. After bishop takes g6, I have bishop takes e1, which is a mistake. And I should have taken the bishop. And after, after the rook moves... Then it thinks I have compensation. And then I, I suppose I dominate the d-file with my rooks. I instead took on e1. And I was very worried about bishop takes f7. But then I was thinking that after this exchange, I'm good. Because I can get my bishop out to a6, I can take the b file, and I can survive. I've got two rooks for a queen. The computer likes um, bishop taking on h7, but I wasn't so convinced by this. I thought I was fine in this variation, because again, I dominate the d file, but apparently not. Anyway, my opponent retreats to d3 instead, so I save my bishop, and plays knight g5 attacking h7 so i play h6 and queen h5 is played as expected and here if i take the knight i get mated but i don't have to take the knight you know i i, can, I don't have to take it so i go bishop e7 so i threaten knight, the knight with the bishop and he goes knight e4 retreating and i play c5 the idea of c5 is to get my bishop to, I don't know what's happening with the arrows, to get the bishop to b7 to attack the knight. Uh, but I was worried about knight f6 check and potentially having to take with the pawn and the queen getting in at, on h6. My opponent goes g4, I go bishop b7, and he goes g5. Here apparently c4 is the move, forcing the bishop off of the diagonal and then taking the knight. And this is fine. Huh, I didn't see that. 
I took the knight straight away. And here, with my rook hanging and h6 hanging, I play the brilliant move, bishop takes g5, because I can't allow my opponent to take. So here I give the rook up, and I've got a rook, a bishop, and a pawn. No. A rook, a bishop, and two pawns for a queen, which is actually 10 points versus 9. And here I thought, because of the configuration of my pieces, my bishop being well defended and controlling d8, my rook can go to d8, and I've got a lot of activity. His pawns are also very scattered and weak, and I feel I felt like I could pick them off. And my opponent plays queen d1, which I was very happy to see, because now rook d8 comes with tempo. Goes to f1, which presumably is trying to get to a6 to target my a pawn. And I was okay with this, because I figured that I can sweep up his queenside pawns. And here I go, g6. Um, the reason I go g6 is because I was worried about, after a move like this, queen a8, king h7, queen e4, forking them. But if I go g6, then I can go to g7, and there's no useful checks for white. And I'm also happy to give up b6, because then we trade all the queenside pawns. And here, I was like, okay, white can't win. I have a fortress. I'm up a pawn, and I've got a rook and a bishop for a queen. White has three pawns, but he has no way of breaking through, and my king is incredibly safe. So I kind of think, like, okay, I can just create this fortress where my bishop and pawn defend each other and the bishop defends the rook, or the rook is defended by pawns. My king is safe, my opponent can't win. So we play a few moves, I attack his pawn, and here I realise I can win the pawn, and he just can't defend it. And I start to get hopeful, I think that I can actually win this now. Um, you know, the computer's giving blunders left, right, and center for various reasons. Here, it's because this pawn is hanging if the king steps off to the f-file. If he goes to h3, then I give him a check and I win the pawn. And if he goes to h1, I pin the pawn and I win it. I didn't see this, but the point still stands that I am actually just winning his pawns because they're so weak and split up. And I could actually push for a victory. So, you know, a few more moves, just shuffling with, as you can see, very low on time. I play h5 to advance a bit. I go bishop e5, rook g5, just give him a check, and I walk back. And here I go h4. Again, I'm just pushing a little bit further, just seeing if my opponent slips up. My opponent has no checks on my king, so that's not a problem. He's still shuffling his queen. I go g5, just advancing, because I need to try and break through with a pawn. Queen c8. I go king g6. I wasn't happy about king g6, because it now it allows the queen in. But I can escape to e7, and my opponent runs out of checks, and his queen's under attack, which gives me another tempo, so I can put my bishop on f4, shoring up the defense, and allowing my rook to potentially move on to the d-file. Gives another check, comes back, gives a check. I go g6, and again, white has to spend a tempo trying to create another threat. He has no immediate checks, which gives me another move. So after queen h8, preparing another check on g8, I can play rook d5. Check, here, check, here, and again. We get to a position where white needs to spend a move to set up a check, like moving the queen over here to set up checks on the second rank. It's kind of white giving me checks, and I, I can escape. So the white has to make a preparatory move to make another check, but during that tempo, I can advance my position. So that's what happens. I play rook d2 check, and I win h2. Here I'm winning. I give another check. 
the king moves on to the h file and I push. The king goes to h6 to try and go to g7 so that the queen can step on to the h file, like so, preventing queening. And then I go bishop e5 check, force the king to g8. And I play rook g1 with the idea of promoting. The computer calls it a mistake because it wants me to queen straight away. Oh my god, and then I threaten mate. Wow. Okay, that's very nice, but with 20 seconds I did not see that. I played it simply, but I did allow queen f7 check. And here, I'm winning if I can get my king safe and just get one tempo to promote the pawn. So, we do a bit of a dance. Here, I blunder my bishop and I'm losing, but my opponent misses it and I'm winning. And now I'm even more winning because I win f3. Queen d3, king g4, queen e2 check. Again, this bishop constantly guards this pawn, and if the queen ever tries to take the bishop, I promote. So, check, bishop blocks, check, king moves up, check, king moves back to g4. Here, oh, actually, after queen d4 check, king h3, my opponent actually resigned because this the computer line continues like this and I'm queening and there's nothing my opponent can do because I just surround my king with as many pieces as I can and so I win a wild game I completely blunder it in the end <laughs> to queen e4 which my opponent doesn't see but yeah for all you people in YouTube thinking that the Cairo Khan is a boring opening Think again, I've got many videos on this channel with Cairo Khan games which are crazy, absolutely crazy, and they go against the general consensus that the Cairo Khan is drawish and boring. Not so much, not so much. But anyways, if you guys stuck around to the end of the video, thank you very much. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.